in the High Court of Australia. Office of the Registry, Sydney. Number S142 of 2000. Between Ching Tian Jiang, applicant, and John T. M. Quack, respondent. Application for special leave to appeal. McHugh J. Kirby J. Transcript of Proceedings at Sydney on Friday, 16 February 2001 at 2.17pm. Copyright in the High Court of Australia. Mr. Q.T. Jang appeared in person. Mr. J.F. Hassett said, I appear for the respondent, instructed by Hassett Dixon. Jia Zhou sworn as interpreter. Justice McHugh said, Yes, Mr. Jang, would you explain to him, Ms. Interpreter, that he has 20 minutes to put his arguments to us? Three minutes before the 20 minutes is up, the yellow light will come on, warning him that he has only three minutes. Perhaps he might proceed with his argument. Would you go to the rostrum? Mr. Jang said, I will supplement my summary of argument with oral submissions. For the reasons set out below, it is denied that the applicant, uh, that the appellant, both at the trial and in the appeal, has not followed the procedure laid down in the rules for the making of application for the lodging of fresh evidence, and did not apprise the respondent of the nature of the fresh ed evidence. Justice McHugh said, But that is not the grounds relied on in your summary of argument, which appears at page 26 of the book. You rely on two points. The first is that the judge erred in refusing leave to issue a subpoena. The second is you allege now, but you did not allege in the Court of Appeal, that Acting Justice Brownie did not give you every opportunity to present your case. They are the only two grounds which are before us, and your argument will have to be confined to those two grounds. Mr. Jiang said, Yes, only the two imp more important questions. First, about issuing subpoena. Acting Judge Brownie refused my application for the subpoena to issue to the Soviet Union to Agro Chim Export Company. This is the first. Acting Judge Brownie said the reason why I refused to issue the subpoena because the witness, my witness, Sergei Bul Bulgak, according to this, contends by the witness, he said the Russian... Justice McHugh said, If I could just interrupt you, you correct me if I am wrong. The judge said that Mr. Bulgak had said that Mr. Pantelev of Agvigro Chim Export had made a statement to him, and it seemed that from that that it was unlikely that Agro Chim Export would respond to the subpoena, even if it was issued, that company having its offices in Russia and the Ukraine. The other factor to which the judge referred to was that you made the application for leave, to issue the subpoena after the evidence in the case was completed. In those circumstances, the judge declined to give you leave. That is what is called a discretionary judgment. You have to show there was some error in the exercise of the judge's discretion. The Court of Appeal thought there was not. What was the error that the judge made? Mr. Jiang said, the judge said because of the company Agro Chim Export corruption, corruption to break the rule of Russia. Justice McHugh said the judge did not say anything about corruption in his judgment. Mr. Chang said not this term, not corruption, to break the rule of Russian Federation, he said. 
So I do not think if I issue the subpoena to AgroChim Export, he will respond. Justice McHugh said, Yes, I know. But the judge said, did he not, that according to Mr. Pantelev, AgroChim Export had been breaching Russian law, and perhaps the law of the Ukraine or the former Soviet Union, in that it had been exporting when it should not have been. That being so, the judge thought it was unlikely that they were going to answer a subpoena to produce documents which would show they were breaking the law. Mr. Jiang said, Because the witness said the question, the company AgroChim Export had confirmed only one official contract of 20,000 metric tons of urea. He said other contract unofficial. So acting Judge Brownie said this means this company break the rule, break the policy of the rule of the Russian Federation. Justice McHugh said, Justice Kirby and I have read the papers. We have read your submissions and we understand the case that you made. But what you have to realize is that we do not hear appeals as of right. There has to be something special about the case before we will grant leave. This is just a matter concerning procedure, which ordinarily it is very difficult to get leave to appeal, not only in this court but in other courts of appeal. What is special about this case? Mr. Jiang said, Court of Appeal dismissed my case, they said, because I did not send the fresh evidence to the respondent. Justice McHugh said, but that is a different point. That is not a point that is before us. In your special leave application, you have two grounds. One, about the subpoena, and two, about fair opportunity to present your case. There is no ground in your notice about the evidence. Mr. Jiang said, the two question, one is issue subpoena, and another one, acting Judge Brownie. Before this, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court give me two days of hearing, but Brownie kidding me. Brownie said, no, wait, just we discuss how many tons. If the... Justice McHugh said, that is not quite fair to the learned judge, is it? What happened is that the defendant, with a view to saving time and costs, suggested that the judge should first determine whether Sem Semvilar had brought any urea at all, and the judge says you agreed to that. Therefore, the judge did as he was entitled to do. He made an order under Part 31, Rule 2, just to try that issue. On that issue, you failed because there was not the slightest evidence before the judge that Semvilar had ever bought anything. In fact, its director said they can only buy it at 178 US dollars to 176 dollars a ton and the market for it was only 152 dollars a ton so they were not interested in buying it and they never bought any your whole claim to commission depended upon there being purchases of the urea by the company Mr. Jiang said may I say yes this is a crucial question because defendant re deceived not only me, defendant deceived Australian Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, and today Australian High Court because this fabricate lies, 152. McHugh said, what the judge said is that there was a lot of evidence that Urea, Mr. Jiang said, acting Judge Brownie in his judgment of 3 November 1999, here I must say, this judgment, even the date of issue of the judgment, is wrong. M Justice McHugh said, it has 4 November on it. Mr. Jiang said, written 4 November. I am indeed certain of it. Even this problem, they paid no attention. In his judgment, paragraph 6, acting Judge Brownie greatly admired the defendant. Quack. Fabricated the lies. 178, 176 and then after $152, and the professed said, there is no direct evidence contradicting Quark's simple logic. But people cannot help asking you, do you have any evidence proving this anecdote are not fabricate lies? 
when which company gave the counter offer of 152 metric ton? Why Quack instruct me to give a counter offer of 169 dollars when SPAC give us a quotation of 179 dollars? Justice McHugh said, Mr. Jang, what the judge said is that there was no evidence contradicting the ev that evidence called in the defendant's case. And he said the simple logic is fairly attractive. But then the judge went on to say that if the company had bought anything, you would expect there would be some documentation. But there was not any. There was no evidence at all that this company had ever bought anything. A lot of urea had been shipped from the Ukraine to Hong Kong and or China, but there was no evidence that any of it was shipped on behalf of Semvilar, and that is where your case failed. Your claim was for a commission of a dollar per ton of urea, bought by Semvilar, but you failed to prove it bought any. Mr. Jiang said, Acting Judge Brownie heard only one side, the defendant's side. He did not listen to both sides. He not permit me to say anything during the two hours of hearing. When I said the defendant deceived court, for example, he went to Bangkok, Thailand, to sign contract with former Soviet Union company, and he said, no, I didn't go to Bangkok. Look, here is my passport, passport copy. Here on 3 November, we found all this passport is expired, all the passport. We asked him for current passport. Where the passport? Where? He took out and gave us a copy. He has been to Bangkok. First, he deceives the court. Second, we send the fax to former Soviet Union company, the name ASPAC, in Bangkok, Thailand. The defendant knowingly changed this name. He said, no, not ASPAC company of Russia. Justice McHugh said, Mr. Jiang, in your own interest, you have to stick to the issues. These matters which you did raise before the Court of Appeal are not matters that you have raised here. I do not know who drafted your special leave application, but it is confined to two matters, one about subpoena, one about fair opportunity. Mr. Jiang said, yes, first, subpoena. Why? Why you did not issue subpoena? You can issue subpoena to Soviet Union. Today is Russian Federation. You send subpoena to Russia, and in Moscow there is the Supreme Court in Moscow even via Soviet Supreme Court in Moscow to give everything, escort. I apply just subpoena because in Australia, court never sends certificate to other country, to any witnesses, to give us evidence. Exhibit. In Australia, only apply for subpoena to issue, and then the witness send us certificate. I want what certificate quality of contract signed between Quack, our company. Only two person, Quack and me. I, general manager, Quack, so called a director. This two person. He said he did not issue subpoena. What you did not recognize the witness, 20,000 metric tons urea, because the witness went 10 times to Russia, to Moscow. Pantaleev said, This Pantaleev said, if we give you the correct digit of the urea you bought, then because we just as corrupt, this only put to their own pocket, then the court will present us the death sentence. It is a very serious problem in the Soviet Union, and just like in China. We're corrupt. Only corrupt. Today's Moscow, everywhere corrupt. Only corrupt. No truth. Why you did not recognize only 20,000 metric tons of urea, this official contract? You did not recognize. You, acting Judge Brownie, very interesting. The defendant's simple logic, $152 a metric ton. This is simple logic. Very attract me. What logic? This man, defendant, deceived them not one time. Every time, deceived court. I work for him. He say, I give you $300 per week. Where? He did not give me one cent. And I give you one dollar commission. When I did all the business with the so former Soviet Union in 1989, when I contact with, not in English, in Russian, and send a fax to us, and we send fax to him, 
Quack sign on the fax document. I sign. And reply to us and Mr. Boris Troshin, Russian manager, sign. All this document here. But defendants say, no, we have nothing. We no longer have the letter. We received just a letter from Russian embassy in Bangkok. At that time, deceive the people. Deceive the court. This one very simple, very simple question. Just send subpoena to Russia. Even today, even now, send subpoena. I've written many letters to the Russian president, Boris Nikolaevich Yeltsin. Today is President Putin. Just as McHugh said, Mr. Jiang, your 20 minutes is up. Mr. Jiang said, yes, I know. Just as McHugh said, Ms. Interpreter, would you discuss with the applicant to see if there is anything further that he wants to say? His time is up. Mr. Jiang said, may I say something? Just as McHugh said, yes. Mr. Jiang said, the time is up. Today's problem, because just send the subpoena to Russia. Just as Kirby said, I think we understand that. The question was not to allow you to have further time in the English language, but whether there was anything in Mandarin that you wanted to say to us through the interpreter, as she has come today. But you seem to have expressed yourself pretty clearly in the English language, and we have read the documents that you have given us, so I think we understand your case. Mr. Jiang said, You understand me when I speak English. The defendant said that I speak just broken English. Am I speaking broken English? Just as McHugh said, Certainly not, and you seem very eloquent, Mr. Jiang, but your time is up, and I will have to ask you to sit down, please. Yes, the court need not hear you, Mr. Hassett. In this matter, the applicant seeks special leave to appeal on two grounds. The first is that Acting Justice Brownie erred in refusing to grant leave to issue a subpoena to produce documents on a foreign company which is situated in Russia and in the Ukraine. The application for leave was made after the evidence in the case had been completed. The learned trial judge gave reasons for refusing to grant leave. The Court of Appeal could see no error in the exercise of the judge's discretion, nor can we. In addition, the matter concerns a matter of practice and procedure, which is always a strong ground for refusing leave to appeal in this and other courts. The second ground of the application is that Acting Justice Brownie did not give the applicant every opportunity to present his case. This was not a ground of appeal before the Court of Appeal. The transcript of the trial before Acting Justice Brownie is not before us, and the allegation of lack of opportunity to present the case depends on the applicant's assertions from the bar table and in his written summary of argument. That being so, the applicant should not be given leave to investigate what is a purely factual matter, which is not the subject of any sworn evidence before us, and which was not raised in the Court of Appeal. The application for special leave to appeal is refused and must be refused with costs. The court will now adjourn to reconstitute. At 2.42pm the matter was concluded.